Welcome to Governmental and Not-for-Profit Accounting. I am one of your guest lecturers. Although I will not likely be your instructor, I am very excited to assist you in your learning of governmental and not-for-profit organizations and their unique accounting and reporting features. In this week's lectures, we will discuss the uniqueness of the governmental and not-for-profit environment, your assignments, discussion topics, and challenges that you may face in the weeks ahead. Remember to definitely focus on our learning objectives this week. Now let's get started. First, we will outline the key differences that distinguish not-for-profits and governmental organizations from businesses. Why do we need governmental and not-for-profit accounting courses? In fact, why not have separate courses for every distinct group of businesses? You would agree that this would not be feasible. Since the main focus of accounting is to render a picture of an organization's performance, the type of performance will dictate the accounting measure. Therefore, businesses' primary objective is profit. In contrast, not-for-profits, including governments, mission is fulfilling service goals. Financial statements of businesses measure profitability, its key objective. Financial reports of governments and not-for-profits focus on other service performance objectives. The focus on profit profitability is not relevant. Your focus this week will be on identifying not only the governmental accounting differences, such as fund accounting, but also on which factors do not distinguish governmental and not-for-profit from businesses. These similarities will have implications for both accounting and reporting. You each will have the opportunity to address many of these environmental differences, similarities, and respective implications by participating in our discussion forum. Let's talk about the white paper. The GASB in 2006 issued a white paper titled Why Governmental Accounting and Financial Reporting is and Should Be Different, which is obviously implied by the title. It sets forth numerous reasons as to why governments are unique and therefore justified in their own standard setting organization. In addition, the report points to several other differences in how government accounting differs from business accounting. The GASB paper is available on the organization's website. One point to be made is that governmental and not-for-profit accounting is far more challenging than business accounting. Although both face many of the same challenges, most governments and not-for-profits conduct business-type activities, and both need capital to begin operations. Also, both make capital budgeting decisions. However, when making capital budgetary decisions, a not-for-profit entity must analyze more than the incremental cash flows, which are typical for a business capital budget decision. Take, for example, members of a not-for-profit decision-making board. When considering whether to purchase a bus and new building, some of the factors we would consider would be the benefit and value of the new building and bus to the individuals that we serve. Other less measurable and less defined factors would be weighed, including political and social factors. Your assignment topics this week will enhance your understanding of the critical differences between capital budgeting in a business and a not-for-profit organization. Now let's turn our attention to the governing boards that oversee the accounting and reporting standards for governmental and not-for-profit entities. One authoritative body also administers both businesses and non-governmental not-for-profits. Recall that the U.S. government was constitutionally created in 1789. However, 
greater than 200 years passed before Congress established an act that allowed the federal government to create an accounting system that would provide timely, accurate, and audited financial information. This enacted legislature led the federal government to partner with one, the Department of the Treasury, two, the Government Accountability Office, and three, the Office of Management and Budget. These three agencies established the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board, which is now responsible for the accounting standards for the federal government and its federal agencies, such as the Department of Education, and Department of Defense. Because of the federal government's unique accounting methods, we will defer our detailed discussion of federal accounting and reporting for later chapters. However, this week, identify how the FASB influences generally accepted accounting principles for governments. Remember to check into your learning activities and begin your journey into governmental and not-for-profit accounting. Best of luck and many successes.